Hello, this is Mark from IMNG Organic. It's the end of October, and today we're going to start making our full compost just using leaves. As you can see, that the, they're still brown and crisp, and it's still showing color, but within a week or two, they'll end up looking like this. And here it is, a few weeks later, and it's starting to break down on its own. They've lost their color and it's starting to uh, warm up a little bit, not too much, because we don't have anything else in there. This is just leaves and maybe a little bit of pine needles and some grass clippings that might have been mixed in. We get them delivered and we start spreading them out and we move around with a bucket on a tractor and I'll show you how we kind of fluff them up and spread them around with the piece of equipment on the back of our tractor. We have a rototiller attached to our back of our tractor. It's about five feet wide, and you can see those tines that spin around. Um, basically what it does, it doesn't really chop it down any further. It really pretty much just aerates them to allow more oxygen getting into the pile. I'll get on the tractor in a second, and then we'll uh, move forward a little bit, and you might see some steam coming out from the pile. Uh, the bacteria and also the fungus is hard at work at decomposing those leaves already. And about after a year's time of just maybe once a month of rototilling or moving those leaves around, again, you don't have to. You don't have to add anything to it. Just let them sit and rot in a place that you have near your garden so you don't have to move them as far. You have this lovely leaf mold or compost. Now, compost is adding two ingredients or more into it. But again, you don't have to. Just use your leaves as is and let them decompose. Uh, if you can fluff them up or move them around, it'd be great. But again, if you don't, if you don't have that uh, option, it's fine just to leave them alone. And you see this and you say, well, that's still not broken down. It's what's underneath the surface that matters. Here you can see just below the surface, I moved those leaves away. This is what happens if you just leave it alone. And it, again, it's a year's time, but you're doing no work and no effort to it. You have this lovely soil slash leaf mold. And it's able to grow anything you wish to have in it. It has all the nutrients you need, and you're all set. You have your organic matter, which is going to be holding your water. Uh, I prefer you mound it a little bit. Don't lay it flat in your garden. And just plant your plants directly into it, and you'll be fine. It has gotten this way just due to nature, from all the microorganisms that's in the soil, decomposing it, uh, you're adding that air, if you can, into it by uh, rototilling it, and it's just going to turn into this great, great soil amendment. I just took a step back from where I was showing you the uh, leaf mold that's towards the end. I've been working on this about for the last hour. We've, uh, or I have pushed the uh, leaf mold or compost to the side and made piles. And in those piles we'll be growing our tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants next year. Uh, again, we'll be filling up the center again with leaves. And you can see to your left and to your far right, those piles that I have pushed over the leaf mold. And let's just take a closer look. As you can see here, we have this beautiful leaf mold and uh, compost that we have added to our soil. Uh, again, this is not uh, too much of our own soil here. This is just what's left over of the leaf mold slash compost. Now, if you just leave this alone, you're going to lose a lot of it over winter. Now, remember, it took a whole year to get to this point, and I don't wish to lose this. So what we're going to be planting in here is a cover crop of crimson clover. Uh, it can grow very nicely over the winter, and it's a legume, and it will be fixing anywhere about 100 pounds of nitrogen to this area, uh, actually to an acre, and you just have to minus out this strip. This strip is about, let's say, uh, 10 feet wide and 300 feet long. 
and what we'll do in here we'll plant our tomato plants uh, it would be almost a raised bed so we'll have good drainage on it and also too the crimson clover will be adding that nitrogen because we'll terminate that next May before we plant our tomato plants in here and here you can see on our right hand side we made our pile of our compost slash leaf mold Again, um, it's going to be planted up with that crimson clover, which we'll put the seeds on tonight because we're expecting rain tomorrow. That will fix our nitrogen, like I mentioned before. But also, too, this is what is left over after all those beautiful leaves have decomposed. It has added so much to our soil, uh, organic matter. Uh, it's just perfect. We don't have to do anything to it. Uh, we're only going to probably add some worms in case we disturbed any. We'll throw back maybe uh, anywhere from 500 to 1,000 worms back in there that we buy online. And we'll add our cover crop of crimson clover. If you have a question right now in your mind, you know, Mark, you have disturbed a lot of that soil and a lot of that area, and you've let a lot of that carbon back up in the atmosphere. Yes, but very little. What we're going to do, this drip will not be probably touched again for another 10 years. Uh, all the microbiology is still alive, and that's why we're going to get a cover crop on there. What you can also add in there, you can buy it online, is mycorrhizal fungi. And basically what that does, it helps plants grow. I won't go into it too deeply, but think of a highway. A highway is the root system of a plant. Mycorrhizal is the exits and also the side streets. It gets a more nutrients to the plant because it reaches it further out. It's a good fungus that's actually 80% uh, of plants use uh, in this world to help them grow and to get better uh, nutrients to the plant. Here we have crimson clover that we planted about uh, three weeks ago. You see how well it establishes itself and gives us good ground cover over the winter. It will grow taller. There's actually some crimson clover in another part of our farm that's a little bit more uh, advanced and has reseeded itself. And I'll show you that. And here's that crimson clover that has reseeded itself from last year this time that I planted a seed in this area for a cover crop. This is uh, some flowers had matured and set seeds and has come back um, I don't want it to get this tall over the winter what happens if it does get this big most likely this is going to winter kill uh, you got a 50 50 chance of it coming back in the springtime most of the leaves are moved around a little bit because we had a, a good frost last night it got down to 30 degrees we're ready to apply our cover crop of crimson clover. We have our hand seeder that we uh, strap in front of our chest, over our shoulder. Um, it holds about 20 pounds. It's easy to use. I've been using the push type for years. I uh, got a little tired of it because it's a little hard to push, especially in soft soil or bumpy soil or anything else too. It's a pleasure to work with something you just kind of walk down the strip and spin in front of you and it holds more seeds and it does a fantastic job. Uh, you can buy them online. They're uh, easy to buy and it's around $80. We have our inoculum, which we're going to use since I did disturbance of the soil. And over here we have our crimson clover seed. Now with the crimson clover seed, um, this is about five pounds. We're put on both sides. Uh, it's very small little pellets. You can see little clover seeds. It actually does, uh, fills in quite quickly and you don't need as much as you think you do. So uh, just follow the recommendations. If you wish to put a heavier amount down, that's your choice, but it's not really necessary. That clover, as you see on the other part, um, fills in very quickly and very strong. And one little last note before I go, I hope you enjoyed the video, but also too, you can see how dark the soil is or how black it is because of the organic matter. Uh, what they're finding out is in the springtime, especially when you plant your peppers, your eggplants, and your tomatoes that love that warm weather and have a constant supply of warm weather and also uh, warm soil temperatures that it loves to grow in, that black soil that is... Uh, open to the air. Now when the crimson clover dies off I will rototill that crimson clover down so I can see that black soil but not too deep only about a half inch and just put the plants right into the ground. That soil I will leave exposed for about two weeks. That will heat up the soil around those tomato plants and pepper plants before I put any mulch on it. That way it gets a good root system growing. You can see I have an amount. I got excellent drainage and I have lots of organic matter. Um, 
that I can just uh, retain all that moisture through the whole growing season and those roots can just uh, pretty much explode in the ground and find all the nutrients that they need. Have a great day.